Hello, and welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining me today. Just want to make sure that you could uh, hear my voice and see my screen. If you can't, just uh, uh, let me know, please. Very good. Again, uh, thank you for joining me today. T uh, today, uh, we're going to uh, talk about the auto conversion. And this uh, particular class today is for beginners, of course. Um, and I'm going to take you through and show you what, what the uh, process uh, is in converting a, a bitmap uh, style design from the graphic mode uh, for Corel Draw into the Embroidery Studio side for the embroidery. Uh, I always like to uh, just uh, say that everything starts with the artwork, okay? And because, you know, with the artwork, you know, everything has to be seen clearly if possible. And uh, you just want to make sure that the artwork that you're getting, that it's the actual best type of artwork. And I do understand sometimes, uh, you know, we're in situations where, you know, that, that won't happen because uh, the individuals may not have an artist or they may not have a good graphic of the design that they want done. But uh, for us, basically, you know, that uh, can can present a problem time-wise you know, as far as uh, not being able to see the outlines and things, um, you know, clear so that we could uh, proceed with our, uh, you know, with the project. Here, uh, we have a design and this uh, is uh, a bitmap file uh, and I always ask, you know, how do we know it's a bitmap or a raster file? And I'm going to use my mouse button here. I'm going to roll my mouse button forward here to zoom in. And this lets us know that this is a rasterized uh, file here, basically, because the closer that we zoom in, the more pixelated this uh, design gets and, you know, it becomes blurred, you know, so we can't see. And so that um, this is this is what happens uh, when this is occurring, basically, and it could be from you know, a graphic from online, which we talked about before in previous classes, and I talked about it yesterday also, that uh, 72 DPI is the worst, uh, the worst graphic uh, dot pitch resolution that you can have because uh, it's uh, usually, that's the type that's used on the web, and you can't see the outlines, okay? As we zoom out, you know, you can see that the uh, picturesque look of it basically looks a, little, a lot better, Okay, so it's only when you zoom in close to it is when, uh, you know, we look at it and we begin to see that there's a problem with it, actually. And so at this point, if I click here up top here to my, if I do it at 100%, this is the finished size of the embroidery here. And I want to emphasize that if you if you have your artwork, if the customer sends you artwork, if it's eight inches, you need to shrink it down to the finish size of the embroidery that's actually going to stitch on the garment. That's the size that you want the artwork, okay? Because with that size, as we get into the embroidery mode, you know, I'll just uh, describe, you know, what um, what happens there and how we could uh, better, uh, you know, uh, create our, our images basically in our embroidery from something that we're looking at it, the actual finish size of the embroidery, and that's what we're looking at here actually, okay? And so, looking at this design, you know, once you get your design in, of course, if you're gonna import a design in, whether you're gonna copy and paste it from a different program like uh, Illustrator, you can copy it from the screen and you can paste it here uh, in the um, in the embroidery, um, the graphic side here with the Corel Draw, um, or up top here under the File Drop menu, you can go in and uh, you can import in graphics, and choosing the import, you can go anywhere in your computer, uh, flash stick, what have you, and you can bring in uh, a design that way also. So it's just a different way uh, that you can bring in a design, okay? And your formats here, you have a list of formats here that you're able to bring in to the uh, to the graphic side here. Now, note also that you have many more formats here than what you have in the embroidery side. And it's it makes sense here because this is a graphics program, okay? Uh, on the embroidery side, 
you know, even though uh, the graphics is um, kind of intertwined with the embroidery side, you're not going to be able to open up all these different formats here uh, inside the um, from file open or import from the uh, embroidery side. So if you have those different types of formats that you don't see in the embroidery side, of course, you can come here and you can import those designs or you can copy them and paste them on the screen, okay, which is pretty quick also. Okay. X out of this. So here we have our design. And if I select this design uh, here, up top here, you have your, your width and your height of the, of the design here. You want to make sure also that when you bring in your graphics, you want to make sure that you have your lock tab here for your lock ratio. This should be locked. Like right now, if I click on it here, it's showing us here that it's unlocked. Okay, make sure that this stays locked because this allows us, uh, when that's locked, that we can actually go, go in and type in just a number, like uh, here. Like if I type in, if I select this and type in 4.0 and press enter, it's going to resize itself proportionally. Okay. If I had done that, if I uncheck it, and I try that same thing, if I type in 4.0 and press enter, it's going to distort my image. Okay, and so that's important to know. So you just want to make sure uh, that uh, as I undo this, make sure that this is locked. It's your lock ratio. So that if you do need to increase or decrease the size of the image, uh, it increases or decreases uh, proportionately. Okay. Now, once I, again, select this up top here, it, the design itself becomes live, actually. And what happens up top, you'll see something that you won't see. I'm going, to, I'm going to click outside of this here like this. Now, here up top, you're seeing the inches here. So you're seeing uh, something different as far as the display here. But as soon as I select that image, uh, you're going to get something that looks like this if it's not already a vectorized image. And so this pretty much lets you know that... Uh, this needs to be converted to a vectorized image. Vectorized meaning uh, camera ready, ready to be shot for production basically. And so, and I'll show you what that looks like in a minute here. So right now, you'll see trace bitmap and you're gonna click the down arrow here and it's gonna give you three options. One's gonna be a quick trace. I never use this one. Um, it does a quick trace with that, but what we're trying to do, uh, you know, we're trying to go directly uh, to the uh, items that are going to help us with this particular design. So in this case, you have a center trace, it will do a center trace line on a graphic, but we want the outline trace option here actually. So this gives us six options here to choose from. <laughs> One being line art, if it's a basic line art, pencil drawing or something like that. And you have just a regular logo, and it gives you a little graphic here to the left showing you what type of imagery uh, this would be good for uh, choosing to, to create this uh, particular image for. And detail would be something, you know, that has lots of detail in it, a, a graphic image. Um, what I use 99.9% .9 of the time is clip art, okay? And there's a reason why, because with the clip art, the clip art allows you uh, it breaks down most of the colors, okay? Because remember, here in the graphic mode, we're dealing with uh, could be hundreds of colors, okay, in an image, especially if someone sends you an image uh, that has color blending in it, okay? You could be dealing with hundreds of colors, uh, but we're dealing with thread on the other side of this. So we have to make sure that the spacing is adequate for the design. And you have to keep in mind also, we're, we're using thread and we're also using a needle that's about a millimeter wide, okay? And this means that everything has to be bigger, okay? Because it's gonna be stitched on a uh, garment, okay? And so we have to keep that in mind. And so the clip art simplifies the design more and, re and reduces the number of colors in the design uh, that's more guided toward uh, thread, thread coloring basically. And so that will, be a lot better once we convert it over because we don't want a gazillion colors in the design, you know, when, once we go take this over to the other side. Low quality image would be something, uh, a bad image. This image here is not the best, okay, but I've seen worse. Uh, this would be something uh, like low quality photograph or something like that you could use for this one. Uh, and 
this is a high quality image. This would be like a high um, quality photograph. Uh, but uh, I want to share with you also, photographs are not good for doing conversions. They're, they're gonna be the worst actually, okay? Because again, with the photographs, you're dealing with a gazillion colors, okay? And you're trying to convert an image that you're trying to stitch out the thread. And so the more colorization that's in the image, the worse it's gonna be for you, longer editing, uh, you know, uh, it's just gonna take it longer. And uh, if you want to uh, um, give an example, if, if someone gives you a photograph of their, you know, of a dog, okay, or a photograph of a person, and they're they're wanting to you to digitize this and uh, to stitch it out on some fabric. The worst thing that you could do is to try to scan in the photograph and convert the photograph. It's the worst thing, and it's the worst thing based on the fact that you're trying to convert it into stitches to stitch on a garment. Okay, it would be better for you, for us, to have someone uh, uh, draw a picture of that dog or someone draw a picture of the photograph and you convert that, you have a much uh, higher, um, you know, as far as um, uh, accessibility of, um, as, you, as you're going in and you have to keep that in mind, a photograph is not gonna be good for converting, okay? Um, a picture of that photograph, a piece of artwork of that photograph will be a lot better to convert. Your success rate with that will be a lot higher, okay, because you're working from a graphic file that's already been uh, simplified by an artist, okay, and that's something to keep in mind. So you just can't just scan in anything and expect to stitch this out and have this thing run uh, on a piece of garment. It just doesn't work that way, okay. It would be nice if it did, but that's just not, uh, it's not realistic, and that's not the way it happens, okay. So a graphic of the image would be a lot better than an actual photograph of the image. And I'm repeating this for a third time because I want you to just understand this because when you do get a design in, just know you just can't put anything on the screen and convert it uh, without, you I mean, you're gonna have problems, okay? And some designs will require you to send it out to an experienced digitizer, okay, to get it done, period, okay? Uh, and um, And, if you're new, you may not be able to do it, and it's, it's going to be best to send it out and you know find a digitizer that uses the Wilcom. And of course, you want the EMB file uh, when they finish that, and because the EMB file is our proprietary file, that's our blueprint file that you can change and adjust the size from a left chest to a full bag uh, with the necessary changes in it. So you want to keep that in mind. Again, can't just put anything on the screen and convert it, or you can but what the results would be on the other side, um, you know, you may not like the results on the other side. Okay, so here, again, click a trace bitmap. Uh, we use outline trace, I'm gonna choose clip art. As soon as I left click this, it's gonna bring up uh, the power trace tool and the page here on my screen. And what this does, this gives us a preview of the original art, what we see here, which is the bitmap, JPEG, you know, whatever, uh, PNG, whatever file that is there, it's gonna give you the uh, before, and it's gonna give you the vectorized version of this afterwards, okay? And you should be able to even see the difference here of the quality of the graphics from uh, the first image here and the second image, okay? And so this is what um, we look forward to as far as being able to do that conversion. Now, um, we also have the option uh, to go in. Now the type of image, if if let's say for instance, if we choose the clip art and the clip art doesn't do us any justice, which again, nine times out of 10, this is gonna be the best option. You can always click the down arrow and you still have these six options here still uh, in your power trace tool, okay? What you also have is the colors. If you scan in a photograph, you're gonna have a gazillion colors here uh, in this particular palette, okay? And what you're gonna end up doing basically, you have to go in, any colors that are this, that are relatively close in the same color family, you know, sometimes you wanna go in and merge those colors together in an effort to reduce the number of colors in, in that particular design. Uh, again, 
because the bottom line is what we're trying to do, we're trying to simplify the color so that we can actually be able to stitch this thing out uh, in embroidery. Okay, that's the main that's the main thing. So this automatic conversion, you know, depending on the type of design that you have with it, you know, um, you, you're probably going to have to once you do the conversion, uh, when you'll see this once we get over to the embroidery side, you're not finished yet because you still have to prepare that design for production. All you've done when you when you use the conversion, all you've done is you just stitch the object, uh, the design on the screen. That's all you've done. Uh, that design is not production ready yet. You still have to go in and do some work to get that production ready. And uh, that's what an experienced digitizer is a master at, you know, being able to um, create designs for you and have you uh, be able to stitch those designs out. And um, a good digitizer is not going to be cheap. You know, some of them, you know, the, the prices are maybe pretty low, but a real good one is not going to be cheap. And don't think that you know, if you have a good digitizer, that they're ripping you off. They're not actually. They're actually saving you money in the long run, because the worst thing that you could do is get a design, send it out to someone. Uh, they are generating stitches in it using an automatic conversion tool that may not, that does not have the Wilcom stitch processor in it. Okay, and so and then they're sending it back to you, and then um, you end up having to edit that design that you just paid for, which is to me utterly ridiculous. But it does happen. Happens every day, and so um, so we're going to go in. Um, we're going to go back to our settings, and I'm happy with this, with, with the way this looks. And so here is the again bitmap image. Here's the vector image. So now I'm going to click OK to verify this. And so what's happened now is that it con it converted that image to a vector. Let's take a look at it and see the difference. I'm going to click here on. So to actually put this on top, this is the vector image here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna zoom in here also. Here you can see the difference in the quality here of the artwork, okay? This is always gonna be better because you can see it clear, okay? And when you're digitizing it, you know, you're not having, you're not straining your eyes. Um, here's something here, again, there is a difference in the quality, bitmap, vector, okay? This is uh, something that would be considered camera ready ready to shoot you know in print okay and so this is the difference between these two files here this one's definitely going to be a better uh, in order for me to convert this over and so this is what uh, you're working with here when you're bringing in uh, design type files like this okay once you get that design i'm going to undo this so now i've got my bitmap and my vector you know, I could really get rid of the bitmap image here if I wanted to, because I really don't need it anymore. But here, once this is selected, I'm going to navigate up top here. You have a tool here uh, in a feature that's called convert graphics to the embroidery mode. And it tells you convert selected graphics to the embroidery and switch to Wilcom decoration. OK, and so right now, once I select this as I left click with that selected, it's going to do the automatic conversion here. And when this happens, the system is on automatic pilot, okay? Uh, it knows based on the width of the objects on the screen, whether it needs to do a complex fill stitch, like you see here, okay? Whether it needs to do a satin stitch for something like, like this. And this did a pretty decent job here of the converting this, okay? so. Here, here is the converted image into embroidery, okay? But like I, like I mentioned a few minutes ago, you, you're still not, you, you're still not done yet because all you, all you've done is you converted the, the, the design over to the embroidery side. So now we have to prepare this design for production, okay? And so here, again, I'm, I'm going to go here to my color object list, and I want to make sure I'm going to click the graphics here for the bitmap. I'm going to right click this. I want to lock this on the screen so it doesn't move. And uh, for the vector art here, I'm going to delete that. I really don't need it now. Um, it's only its main purpose was to set it up so that I could uh, generate the stitches for the automatic conversion. Okay, so at least I've got, if I press S here, I've got the bitmap in the background if I need it for anything, you know. 
Uh, so here is what we have. So once that's done, as I press the zero key after the after the nine key here, and so now we're going to do a um, preview here of the stitch player. Let me go to design here also. I want to make sure because here, and this is because of the, maybe because I moved that uh, artwork on in the uh, graphic side actually, the white cross here, here, this is where the, the center of the hoop should be here with this white cross here, okay? And so this means that uh, once you hoop your design, uh, it starts in the center. It should go back to the center once it finishes it for your next run. But this is in the wrong location. It should be uh, here in the center of my design. And so you want to make sure uh, if 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 it's off center here, you go to design, and you're just going to choose auto start and end. And as you can see here, the maintain automatically is not selected here. So I'm going to use auto start and end. I want to make sure that this is maintained automatically so that if it's moved or anything, if I add anything to the design, okay, it's going to um, recenter itself. Click save here, save it to my template to make sure it's saved to my template. Here's the start and stop here in the center of this hoop. I'm going to click OK, and you see instantly it moved to the center of the design here. Now, you'll notice something also here, the red crosshair in the square in the center, this is actually the center of the page, this the red square and crosshair here. This is not necessarily the center of the design itself. If I wanted to center it in uh, here, I could select the image here. And here on the bottom of my positioning, I can make this zero for the X. And make sure that this is zero here for also for the Y and press enter. And you see now it shifts itself and now it's exactly center, but the artwork is not center. Okay, but it's okay because I can go to my color object list, right click on this and I can unlock it. As I select it here, I can also go down and do the position X here, zero, and position Y. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you what to do if you are very anal and you prefer to, to use that method. Okay, and so now also, uh, I wanna save this, okay? So I'm gonna go to File at this point, and I'm gonna do, do, a, do a Save As here. And this is just gonna be green growth. LC for left chest. And I'm going to save this. Now, this pop up here on my screen, the reason why this comes up is that I saved the image in a lower version of um, Wilcom, a previous version. So when I went to File and I chose Save As here, here on the bottom here, where it says save as type, see I'm saving this as an E3, not an E4 file, because if if you're doing a design for a customer and uh, that design, uh, if they're using E3, they won't be able to use the E4 file. So any, if they're using E2, you'd have to actually save that in that version of software in order for them to um, use that. And so here, as I replace this here, and so this is, all, the, all of this is saying to you basically is that, uh, in E4, there may be some updated um, components in E4 that are, that are not in E3. And that's all this is. And all you got to do is just click yes to confirm that. Okay. And so I'm going to hide the bitmap image on the screen. But first, I'm going to, uh, using the shortcut keys on the keyboard, I'm going to press S as in Sam to hide the embroidery. And here I can only see the bitmap image. And I'm going to go up top here, and here's a show bitmaps, or I can press the D as in dog key. It'll hide the bitmap on the screen and bring it back. Okay. So I want to see the stitches again now. So I can either go in and at this point, if you want to see those here, I can choose the show stitches here, 
which also shows me that the S key is also the shortcut key for this as well. Okay, so now the next step is I press zero after the nine key to get a full view of this. Now, if I wanted to see this at one to one, you know, I could press my number one key in the upper left corner. That takes it one to one. So this is the actual uh, one to one view here of my design. Okay, so right now I want to do a stitch player. So navigate, click here. I just want to see how. It's going to stitch it out. It goes in, does the underlay stitch, which is our foundation stitch, which is very important also. And it does an edge run underlay stitch also. So it goes in. And let me speed this up here. Notice the stitch angle here that, that this is stitching in. I want you to watch where the last stitch is. It should be right here, based on this stitch angle. See what just happened? And you see that line here? I know you've probably seen that before also. And that's the reason why there's a line there because the last stitch, it goes back to the to the middle here, which is not good. So we, we, can, we can change that, we'll have to. And here, it goes in and does the lettering. Again, from the automatic conversion standpoint, um, you know, it doesn't know to do it in order like a, like a human. So it's going to do it. Um, it just knows that it has to fill those areas in. Okay. So as I select, I'm going to click on the, the the background here, and I'm also I'm going to press the reshape tool or press H, and you have your control points. You have your node points here. Here's your stitch angle. Is that 60 degrees? If I wanted to do maybe 15 degrees, I can do 15 degrees. But if it stayed the way it was with that stitch angle like this, the exit point should be at the far at, at nine o'clock. Because based on this stitch angle here, I, the last stitch should be at the far opposite of this stitch angle. And that means also that if I change the stitch angle to, 19, to 18 degrees, now you see that line going across there? As soon as I move that exit point to the top, that line disappears, okay? Because you want that to end on the on the edge of it right here. Just on the end is where you want that exit point to be on the imagery, okay? And for this, for the density setting here, you have your tatami stitch here. Um, here I'll use the 0.38 for the spacing. And for the length here, I'll use 3.8, 3.8. And I want to save this for next time also. For my offset fractions here for my offsets, 66 and 67, I'm going to save this. I'm going to click OK. And I want to use this for my default template, yes. Yes. Over at the normal template. So in the future, uh, this for my tatami stitches should be the, the same numbers here. Okay. All right. So that's done. And so next, I have the uh, the leaves here on this. As we look at the leaves, I'm going to navigate here up top. I'm going to take off the true view, and I'm also going to um, navigate over to my color object list. I'm going to right click on the background here and I'm going to hide it because right now I don't want to see it. I just want to see the fill here for the leaves. Okay. And it goes in and it does the, see the zigzag stitches here and the edge run underlay stitches there. And um, I want to make sure here that I navigate up top and go to metrics. If you want to measure anything on a screen, you'll press the M key as in Mary. So as I press M, and I can measure the distance of the columns here. And this is 7.1, and that's fine, okay? And so that's going to be just great because what I don't want 
is for that stitch length to become 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters, especially um, no more than 12 millimeters because on most machines, the, the maximum stitch length for that machine is gonna be 12.1. I think on the Barrett machines, they're 12.7. And if you put a, a stitch, a satin stitch that's longer than that maximum stitch length on the machine, what's gonna happen when your machine is stitching, as soon as it gets to that area, it's gonna go ch -ch -ch -ch. Nothing's gonna happen because what you've done you programmed it to stitch a stitch that is uh, that's that that is not capable of doing because that stitch length is too is too long, and so but in any, any seven millimeters is fine, okay. And so with this now I'm going to press as I go up top I'm going to choose my reshape tool here again or oh, my sorry my um, true view, and so I just want to make sure that everything is stitching the way that I want it to, and so here because these are relatively close to each other. You have your first ones here, and then you have the one in the bottom here as well. And so once I select these two on top here and I go to my reshape tool, I've got a starting point here. Maybe I want to start it here. And it goes all the way down and it finishes here at the bottom. And that's what you see here. And if I press tab, it goes into the next leaf here like this. Here's the starting point, and the exit point here is up at the top. Okay. Now, as we're looking at this, you know, if you look at this, you know, maybe you don't want the um, the leaves to close up like you see them closing up here. You can always go in and modify and edit um, one or two ways by going in and moving the outline. So if I select it here and click reshape tool, I can move the outlines or I can go in and I can adjust the spaces based on the pull compensation in the column width. Okay, watch what happens when I go in and I select these two. And I go to pull comp. Now, Normally, if a pull comp here, the pull comp is here at uh, point. Is it at two? Is it two point? I'm going to do one point one point seventeen. Now, watch what happens here. Also, so if these columns, if they're too thick, and I want to see some space in between these uh, these leaves, um, you would go in and use the column width. Okay, the column width increases or decreases the width of a column. So right now, it's at uh, 0.15, I can take this down. Watch what happens when I go minus 20. It does that. It can go way down, okay? I'm gonna undo this. So if I wanna see some space between here, but not as much space, uh, but not have it close up like it did before, I can go minus here in my column width, okay? And again, if I wanna make sure also if I want the same column width here on this one as I got on these, you know, I can change, I could just select it and change it here, or I can just right click on this. I can make those properties current. And then I can select this one, right click it, and I can apply those current properties like that. Okay. And that means it's going to have the same properties as the first one that I selected. Okay. And I'll say, I'll, I can also click here and go to my reshape tool. I can also add stitch angles to this also, because if I go in, press my control key down, once I move my cursor on the outline, you see that stitch angle tool here? I can left click, it, it'll add a stitch angle like this. And this is great for me because I can go in now I can change the angle of the stitches like this. You see what happened there? Here, you've got two stitches here at the end. If I delete this one and this one and move this one here, this is these two are the last two stitches here actually. But from the auto conversion, sometimes it will go in and it'll make some adjustments with that that you can go in and change. If you're not happy with 
the line points that you see here with the nodes, you can change those to curves by, I can select one here, press shift and go over to the end, click this one. It selects all of those at the same time, right? I could also press my space bar to make those curve points. I'll press S to hide the stitches. Here are the line points. If I press my space bar, it changes them to curve points like this. And it's going to make the shape a lot better. Here I can try to do this here for this one also. Press my shift key down, press space bar. It'll change the node points to curves. And by giving it a nicer curve here, here also, here, press my shift key down, press space bar. Same thing here. Shift here. And space bar. So you can go in and you can adjust those independently to get those to work uh, to improve the shape of it also. And you can do the same thing for both of for the for the other two also. And so here also, if I press H and go to reshape mode, if, I, if I'm not liking, you know, the way that it's turning here, again, press my control key down. I can turn that stitch like this and improve the quality of it like this. And you want to try to go always the closest distance across like this. Closest distance across. Okay. The only time that you want to make a make a stitch longer if it's something very narrow on the end, like something like this. I select this and I want to make this a narrow stitch. If the stitch is short, then um, in order for me not to make it so tiny to make a uh, a thread break, I can increase the length by making it like an angle like this. And it changes it just like that. That's all you got to do. Okay. I'm going to click save. Okay. And I'm going to also select, I can select these on the screen or I can click the green here at color number 20. And I want to, on my fill stick, on my fills, I'm going to make this 80%. And I'm going to click save. Okay. All right, so that's done. I'm going to right click here on my background and I'm going to uh, unhide it. But what, I, but what I also want to do for this, I want to do a border around it also because the border is going to define it a lot nicer. And so I'm going to click here and I'm going to navigate over. You have your tools here. You have your simple offset tool here. I'm going to left click it and I'm going to give it a, um, for the, for metrics, I'll go minus 0 0.10. I just need one and I want a, a column C stitch like this and I don't have a hole in it, so I don't have to check this one. I'm gonna click okay. And it puts a border in it like this. I select, I want that to be the same color. And I also, I don't wanna use the applique border here that you see here. So I'm gonna take uncheck this it'll change that also so it looks like this okay and once I go back to my regular I can click this also and go into specials here and I can change the width of that here by going into column column width I can make that two just like that and I'm going to click save what I also want to do in order to avoid a uh, trim once I select the inside fill like this, I'm going to navigate and choose my reshape tool. Because the exit point for the fill is up top here, I also want the border to start stitching here also because it's the same color. Okay, and I don't want to I don't want to trim, so I'm going to press tab, and it starts here at the top. And I also want to end it at the top here with the exit point here. I kind of like the three inch better, the three millimeter. Okay, all right.
And you notice that I increased the border. It's okay. I'll grab my lettering here and move it up here using my arrow key at 12 o'clock. I'll slide it up just like this. Now, once that's done, the, the last step here is to go in and to uh, recreate the, the text here on the screen. Now, with the text, I always recommend if, if Wilcom has a font to match that, it would be ludicrous for me to try to you know, go in and digitize this because one, it's not a situation where the letters are too uh, are too small and I have and I'm forced to manually digitize them. This is not the case with this actually. Okay, the letters are large enough here to where if I have a font to match this, you know, um, I'm gonna see if I can find a font to match this. I'm gonna measure the height of the letters here first. I'll press M. Measure this eight 8.5. I'll right click here on my letter A. I'll scroll, height, 8.5. And here, see here. Green growth. I'm thinking I have this font. It's not Western. Is it High Tower or something here? Let me see. I don't want the True Type fonts. That's the second choice. The first choice would be the Wilcom fonts because they've been digitized specifically for this purpose. And what I'm looking for, here we are, small forte. Ah, yes, left click. I want the arc, so I'm gonna create text. And I'll go here, left click. I'm gonna press my control key down to force it to do a straight line here. And 12 o'clock. So I go nine o'clock, three o'clock, and then 12 o'clock. Perfect. All right. And so this is so I don't have to mess around with that. I'll press delete to get rid of it. Don't need it. Move this down. And at this point here, you know, I can decide, you know, if I want to move the letters closer together, I can select this and scroll down here. And I have my letter spacing. Uh, that I can take this in like this, get the letters closer together. If I use my guide here, making sure that um, if I go in, click this once to make it uh, so I can rotate this. And I just wanna make sure that it is going straight across. I see the word green here and I can click on that and go to my reshape tool. If I click on the E, I can use my arrow keys here at three o'clock here to move these over. Space those out like that. I scroll over here. Now I want to click on the G and I'm going to press my shift key and I'm going to click on the T here. Um, there's a couple of things I can do with this. Here, I could adjust this by going in, clicking on the H, zooming into this. I'm going to press S to hide the stitches. I can actually go in and grab the node points here and move these node points out like this. I can make that wider. Okay. And I can also on the T, I can click this. Because I want to make I want to make sure uh, that that it's long enough actually. So don't don't think that you can't go in and adjust these positions here, you know, and and go in and change because you can actually. And I can click on the H here, 
and slide this a little bit. And it may be that um, the space, because of the, the shape of the letters here, um, you know, you're forced to do a trim right there. <clears throat> That's okay. And now I'm going to press the number one key. This is what it looks like. So if I want to now, if I want to generate stitches and uh, right here I have trims. If I want to go in and add connection stitches here, and it just depends because some people they don't like them. Okay, but here, but, but if I did want to add connection stitches here and there, um, all I've got to do is have this selected and navigate and go to my connectors tab. Because I'm using Wilcom fonts, it, I will have to use inside the object. Okay, and currently, uh, where the trim after is here, uh, it's it has the 2.0. What you're basically telling the sewing machine at this point is sewing machine. If there's any spaces in between any characters that's greater than two millimeters, I want you to do a trim. That's what you're telling the machine right now. So if I don't want to use a trim here, all I've got to do is make this number, change it to five, and press enter. Now I have connection stitches here between the G's. This is before with the two, and now it's five. So because there's no space greater than five millimeters now, it's going to do it's going to do a connection stitch there, okay? And here for this eight here at the end of this, you know, that just depends on how you want to do that. We want to leave that in there, you know. It's it, it depends on on who who you are and whatever you like to, to do with that. Because some people they don't like this and they want they may want to use a trim with it. And so just take the number down. At some point you'll get to a number, and you'll have your trim here, but you'll still have your connection stitches here and here. Changes to black. Underlay stitches. No need for a secondary underlay stitch for those. And some arrow keys here like this. I'm going to click Save. All right. So I'm going to go to, to Design. I'm going to run this through my small stitch fill, my small stitch filter here with the Wilcom. If you don't use, if you don't change it, it'll leave it at three tenths of a millimeter, which is fine. I'm like using five. It this removes any unnecessary stitches that are less than five tenths of a millimeter from my design, improving my stitch count. And I'm going to click save. In any event, if I wanted to go in and increase the column width, I could just select this and go to pull comp and take that column within any other direction. Okay, this. And once I do that, because they're thicker now, I can also space those out a little bit further also. All depends on what you're trying to do. Again here. And at this point also, I mean, you decide at this point whether you want to use, you know, a uh, stitch this from center out. You know, I can click on this. And in the special tab here, I can scroll down if your sequence and you can stitch it center out here also. Here and so now, if I go in and use my stitch player, let's see what it does this time. Goes in, I can speed this up a little bit. So now, and everything now is prepared for production. <clears throat> And at this point here also, I mean, it just depends. You know, I could actually go in. And I really don't have to use the zigzag underlay stitch for the uh, for the leaves because uh, actually um, 
the field itself actually acts as a underlay for that. So I really, you know, I don't really have to use a zigzag underlay stitch for that, for the leaves actually. I can just click here and go to underlays and just do an edge run. <clears throat> And a center on if 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 I wanted to actually if I wanted to get more more lift on the fill I could just leave it in there as zigzag that's totally up to you and so now I've got my design and so it's um now it is uh, production ready what I'm also going to do is the colors here I'm going to just go here navigate I'm going to click here to remove unused colors so now I've got uh, just these number of colors here. So I'm going to go in also and make sure that this color here is number three. And I'm going to get rid of that. So now I've got three colors and I'm going to click save. Okay. And so that is uh, the auto conversion um, for this particular session here. And I'll open up now for uh, any questions that you have. And um, I can see I have some questions already. We have the question here, when in the power trace window, do we leave the setting alone? I mean, I, I would actually, I would leave it alone. The only thing that you, uh, the only the only reason why you want to go in and change anything is if the if, is if the graphic was messed up when, when it first went into that mode. In other words, uh, once you click the uh, power trace mode, once you go into the power trace mode and it comes in, if there's something wrong with the vectorized image on the screen, then you can play with those other things, but but usually, if if it's a pretty decent graphic, uh, the only time that it's going to really um, cause problems is if it's a photograph, because the photographs are just I mean, they they just don't they just don't work as well as uh, as artwork because if the artwork is already simplified and that's the main that's the main thing. So if you have it, you know, um, any problems with it that you see is the only time that I would go in and change anything. Other than that, I would just click the OK, and um, and it should be fine. Um, Wendy has a question, why 80%? Uh, are you referring to the um, the density settings? Well, the, the density settings for the 80%, you know, um, they work for me. You know, every, every machine is differently. Uh, it, it works differently, and um, the machine, when it stitches out, on some machines, that density may be too tight. So you may have to loosen your density up. Um, and so that would depend on the machine type that you're working with. But uh, in 80% density, I've never had a problem with it. Okay, never had a problem with it at all. Okay, there's a question. If you're making machine embroidery tassels in your design by making the, the satin stitches, And a stitch to hold them together so that when the bottom stitches are trimmed to give uh, you a tassel what is the longest um, if you're doing those long stitches uh, like that Heather I mean you could uh, I mean you could you could probably go you can go 10 10 millimeters with a with a with a stitch 10 millimeters you know you can do with a stitch and it's, it's, it's a really long stitch and so you can use 10 but as long as you don't, you know, when, once you get to 11 millimeters is when, you know, the machine itself, you know, the 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 sound is going to change because it's going to be going ka-choo, 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 going back and forth versus uh, being the uh, um, regular stitch stitch speed. But, uh, you know, anything, um, you know, past like 10, past 10 millimeters, you're getting really, really long with the stitches and you have to be careful with that. And this is what happens here too, actually. Like, for, let's say for instance, I've got, um, I'm gonna grab this one. I'm gonna right click this and do a quick clone of it. So right now, let's say this, as it is, if I press my T to take off the true view, this is, what, this is what the regular stitch view looks like. And if I zoom into it, these are solid lines. This is what you wanna see, okay, the solid lines. Watch what happens when I take this and I increase the size of this really really big see that this is what you don't want to see you don't want to see these are dotted lines and these are jump stitches now so when it gets to this particular section here 
Uh, the machine is stitching here at normal speed, choo, 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 but we get, it's going to go ka choo, ka choo, ka choo. This is where the jump stitches are here, actually. Okay, and this is what can cause a problem. And if I go in and measure this, press M for measure. Wow, that's 17. As a matter of fact, once it gets, because, because it's exceeded 12 millimeters, so 12.1, 12.7, whatever machine you have, once it gets here, your machine is going to go ch -ch -ch -ch, and it's not even going to move because you programmed it to do something that it can't do. Okay, so you want to make sure, and sometimes if I press T, sometimes you can't see this in true view. You have to press T to take, off, take it off, so you should always be aware of the stitch length that you're working with in your designs. Okay, it'll save you, it'll save you some um, headache, uh, headache powder, headache pills. Okay, if you, if you do it that way. So you have to be careful. And you see the difference in the size between those two. This one's huge. This is jacket bag. And so because this is so large now, the only way that I can solve this puzzle with this one is to go in and change it to a tatami stitch. That's how you resolve it. Okay. But then again, but keep in mind also now, because it's it, it a Tommy stitch, now it's also stitching 200 stitches per square centimeter also. These stitches here, stitching um, about 120 stitches per centimeter for these actually here. Yeah, and because it's a satin stitch also. So you have to be aware of the size of the uh, columns that you're working with uh, inside your program. My pleasure, Wendy. Do I have any more questions? Thank you, Heather. <laughs> Lindy, it's my pleasure. You know, I don't. I told you before that when I'm doing this, I'm not working. <laughs> I'm not working. I'm happy. I'm. Happy. I'm enjoying it because I get a chance to, um, you know, um, teach people what I know. And uh, it's 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 just fun actually. But remember, um, for the next sessions that we do, they're going to be at 2:30. Okay, this one was um, was kind of you know, when when it was uh, scheduled. Uh, I don't think we were looking at the 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 the, uh, the time on it close enough. So for the rest of them, they'll be at 2:30. And when he has a question, what about the special satin for the larger leaf? Um, now, um, yes, Mary, I'll be sending this uh, class in the, in the design uh, uh, tomorrow um, and with the link for the class also tomorrow, Mary. I'll be sending that tomorrow. Now, um, what, for this one, Wendy, for the, if, I, if I'm understanding you correctly, uh, this, the satin stitch, for the, if, if it's going to be something that, that's this size, um, I actually I can't use a satin stitch for this, actually, unless I go in and uh, go to my fills and do an auto split. This is the only this is the only satin stitch that I can use for this because right now uh, it's okay because now the lines are splitting here at seven millimeters, seven point five millimeters. Okay, but usually with something like this, the 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 um, the way that it looks, the presentation of it, it doesn't look as nice as the tatami stitch looks like this. And so, um, when something gets this large, the stitch the stitch type has to be changed to a different stitch type, you know, in order for it to work actually, and just because of the sheer size of it. Let's see, Heather's question: What about the class that is a decoration class? At 3 p.m. Well, those classes for well for next week actually. Yes, Susan. The next the next uh, sessions are going to be at 2:30. Um, if Clark is teaching the class at 3 o'clock, um, that means that um, what I would do is because we don't do these very often, we don't cross them over very often. Um, I would just register. I would just register for the class, and um, 
because you should get a, um, a link for the class. And um, and I'll see also because yeah, I would just register for it because when she goes in, she'll be teaching the class at three o'clock, and I'll be on at two thirty. So um, I would just I would just do that. Just I would just register for the class, and so that you can get a um, uh, to whatever class that that, that you're going to attend. Actually, you know, I would just register for it. Um, the one that, that one that you can't make it for, I just register for it so you get a link for the class. And because um, usually the classes, they don't cross over like that. But this time, this particular day, they are. And when asked the question also, that satin split. Now, the satin split stitch, I mean, it does, it does have, it does have its, um, it, have, it has its place. Because usually, let's say, for instance, if, um, uh, let's say if you're doing like a lily pad or something like that. If you're doing like a lily pad or if you're doing um, a, a design and you want to look at the, uh, like a special effect type fill on that, you can actually go in and do that uh, type of stitch here because right now with this, if we go in and we have the satin stitch like that. Uh, so if this was, if it was smaller, like, you know, smaller than this, but still, Larger than that. Once I look at this, you see these are still these are solid lines, and for, for something like this, you know, I may be able to go in and use the auto split stitch for something like this, uh, and so it just it just depends. Like or for um, the session that we did yesterday, uh, we we used this design for something like this. I'd go in and I'd use the auto split stitch for something like this just to go in. To, to give it a nice effect, actually, uh, without uh, you know letting the stitch get too long, and for the hair or something like that, that you can go in and use that split because it's not going to look nice for everything that you do for it. But for something like this, um, you you will get a, you will get a kind of a feel of it when you go in and you change it. So um, you know, so it'll be per design actually what you're trying to do with with the design, and so that would depend on actually if you're going to go in and use it or not for something like this you know um I, I could go in and use it because here it's larger again than that smallest leaf but it's definitely not as bigger or larger as the as the full bag so for something like that um wood any any type of uh, uh design that you want that you want to use for it that uh, you can go in and do something like that with it it works good and it does really very nicely also for a special effect uh, types of uh, types of imagery, and so on. Um, just more options to choose from, actually. Uh, do I have any more questions? Okay. If not, guys, thank you. Thank you so much for hanging with me uh, today. Um, and um, if you have any um, questions uh, any any other class types that you would like for me to go over please just send them to me and let me know because you know um i don't know everything <laughs> i really don't <laughs> and the only reason why i know what i know now is because i made so many mistakes so um anything that you want me to go over just please uh, shoot me an email at um, support at willcomamerica.com and in the subject matter just put attention james and it's my pleasure nancy um, and Angie, thank you so much. And uh, we ask that you visit us also at www.willcomamerica.com uh, where you can register for classes. And again, thank you so much. You have a great evening and I look forward to uh, being with you the next time. Thank you. <laughs>